Okay, uh, let's talk about let's talk about transgender issues. That's one. What do you think I think about transgender issues? I suspect that you think that um, gender expression, gender identity, um, are fundamentally social constructs. But I could be wrong. No, I believe that there are definitely some biological differences between the sexes. We've observed them. I do believe that gender is a hugely powerful social structure that we've built on top of that, that it is largely but not entirely socially constructed. I think when you look back through the history, you know, biological differences have consistently shrunk. Uh, like we were talking in the 80s. They haven't in Scandinavia. They've magnified. Okay, but we were talking in the now, That's actually an important exception because Scandinavia has gone farther than any other area, the Scandinavian countries, in establishing egalitarian social policy. And the differences in interest and career choice and personality between men and women have grown as a consequence, not shrunk. Which, which is exactly the opposite of what the social construction is predicting. But also just suggest that they're malle malleable, actually, rather than fixed. Well, of course they're malleable. No one would ever suggest otherwise. Right. So that's but, what I mean. But, so I but think they're it's not malleable in the direction that the social constructionists presume. As you flatten out the sociological landscape, you maximize the biological differences. No one saw that coming. And you might think, well, it's a handful of right-wing scientists who are pushing that. It's like, no, it's not. It's mainstream psychology, and there aren't any radical right-wingers in mainstream psychology. And everyone who discovered that was absolutely shocked by it. And these papers have been cited by thousands of people, mm -hmm. and they have tens of thousands of subjects, and they've been done on virtually national level samples, cross-culturally. But I also so think the behavior in Scandinavia has changed. For example, a lot more men take um, paternity leave now that it, there is a portion that is reserved purely for men. That doesn't seem to be making them wildly unhappy. So I think that there are definitely behavioral things that are susceptible to nudges by society, by government and by the state, and that do change the way that people behave. Mm -hmm. yeah, that seems so we can kind plausible. of meet in the middle on we that We know one. that people can be educated and that we can develop as a consequence of learning. That's, that's certainly not a disputable proposition. And I also believe that there is no evidence for gender identity in the way that it is used in, by, uh, you know, in, as an idea of a, of a soul. I think that that's the way that it's often used to me. Um, by who? By, by transgender activists. Yes, well, they, they think it's all about having a female well, soul, and that to me seems strange. Uh, I don't see how you some, can something like biological determinism, right? Mm -hmm. and I, and which I is very, it's, it's one of the things that's so perversely amusing about these sorts of arguments is that well, but I, I, I attribute it to the lack of demand for logical consistency as a consequence of postmodern thinking. You can believe one thing when it's convenient in one situation, and another thing when it's convenient for another. So we're in the perverse position where. If you're a man born in a woman's body, that's biologically determined. But if you're a woman born in a woman's body, that's socially constructed. It's like, okay, good luck with that theory. Right. I don't believe you can be a man born in a woman's body or a woman born in a man's body. What I believe is that there are some people who feel alienation towards their bodies and they want to remove Well, body everybody parts. feels that. Right. But they feel it to such an extent that the best, clinically, the best treatment for them is to transition and live as if they were the other yeah, sex. Yeah. Well, I don't think that there's any evidence that that's clinically the best treatment. We certainly don't know enough to make that presupposition. And I think we're playing with fire, assuming that that's the case. The, the long-term outcome studies certainly don't, don't uh, demonstrate that. So it's not so, so. I would make a very big distinction there between adults and between children. I think. I that think would be a good distinction to make. Right. Yeah. But I think we are very quick to diagnose and treat children in a way that I find and not waiting for the research. And that I find concerning. Yeah. So yeah, well, the lawsuits will put an end to that in about 15 years. So there's, there's, there's one place that we have found from which I, that is something that gets me a lot of hate, right? I'm so sure I'm it does. A, a turf and a bigot for that. So right. I, I don't think that's something that you would have been able to predict that I think, because that is not now the orthodox feminist position. I agree completely. Oh, isn't that good? So we've congratulations. All, we've all learned something. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to talk.